We are a justice-making, truth-seeking people. We gather as a community of believers and seekers. We share our reverence for the mystery of life. We are building the beloved community. Come, let us worship together. Today we are exploring the holiday of Samhain. This is a pre-Christian holiday celebrated by the Celtic people of modern-day modern Ireland, Scotland, Great Britain, and Wales. Samhain is a harvest festival that marks the beginning of the darker part of the year. People who celebrate Samhain think of this as a time when the veil between the worlds is thin and spirits can cross over. We are learning about Samhain today by exploring some of its common practices, like honoring our ancestors. We've also used traditional Samhain decorations on our chancel table, like acorns and oak leaves, rosemary and sage, gourds and brown bread. This morning's music has a lot of traditional elements too, like drumming. We hope that you'll participate in the service in lots of ways, starting with joining in the prelude. We light our chalice to call to bind our ancestors, the ones who have loved us into being. Throughout the year and by their example, we have sown and tended the seeds of love, joy, and connection. We can be confident the spiritual harvest will nourish and strengthen us during the cold months as we take shelter in this beloved community. Please join me and feel the breath rise from your feet to your chest to your head. Ooh. And those who have a percussion instrument, join in, please. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power spirit draw near again gathered here in the mystery of the hour gathered here in one strong body gathered here in the struggle and the power spirit draw near one more time Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit draw near, spirit.
You're invited now to please lay your instruments to rest as we enter some, some more body parts of our service. Join me, if you will, for a body blessing adapted from words by Reverend Lisa Bovey Kemper. And I invite you to follow along and do each action as we do them. Touch your forehead. Bless our minds and the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding within. May our intellects take us on journeys far away. We have been blessed with reason and free will. It is our call every day to use these gifts. Touch your throat. Bless our voices and the truths we tell. Speaking the truth in love is something that requires honesty, empathy, and care. As we speak, we are blessed in return by those who listen. Touch your heart. Bless our hearts, both in love and in heartbreak. The hearts in our chest are strong and resilient. They will be with us for our entire lives. May we heed the wisdom of our hearts and always the truths they tell. Touch your stomach. Bless our bodies as they are sacred and belong to each of us alone. May we live into the full expression of our identities as human beings. May we always retain power over our own beings, striving toward mutually fulfilling and just relationships. Touch your hands. Bless our hands, which catch us when we fall and shape themselves into expressions of love. May our hands be gentle and strong. May we use our hands to create joy and beauty in the world. Wrap your arms around your whole body. Bless our inner selves. May we never feel alone in our life journeys. May we always remember where and who we came from. May we be guided by the compassion, truth, justice, and love of our ancestors' lives. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, service, learning, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these four areas, economic action, and economic, sorry, start again, environmental action, economic justice, civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. In October, our recipient is the Michigan Urban Farming Initiative whose mission is to empower urban communities by using agriculture as a platform to promote education, sustainability, and community, while simultaneously reducing socioeconomic disparity. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time.
church of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. Tell you, I have some high hopes for that dedication one day. All right, uh, this is the uh, time in our service that's very serious. It's going to be uh, set aside for spiritual practice and centering. <laughs> See, it's very serious. Uh, we begin with the sharing of joys and sorrows as we do every week. We start off this morning with a, a note of joy from Melinda Henderson. Melinda says, George and I are pleased to announce the marriage of our daughter and stepdaughter, Anna Zimbelli, to her high school sweetheart, Michael Linden, on October 3rd. A beautiful ceremony celebrating an 11-year relationship made for a relaxing and joyful day with Anna's grandparents, Anne and Dennis Henderson, in attendance. Melinda also shares with us a sorrow. In a very sad note, George and Melinda lost their brother-in-law tragically in a fairly suddenly this past month. Please keep wife and daughter Maria and Anastasia in your prayers. Jane O'Neill has also shared a sorrow with us today from BUC or Jane McFarland. Jane moved away a few years ago but remains active in our community. Jane's son, Jonathan Baker, was diagnosed with glioblastoma a few years ago, three years ago and he is at home now, but he has entered hospice care. On the last Sunday of every month, it is our tradition to light memorial candles to honor our beloved dead. And when we do that, you are welcome to speak the name of the person who, are you, who, are, who you are honoring at that time. When we do this, I'll invite you to go that way and then come up this aisle to light a candle and as a reminder when you light your candle you want to put the lit candle as far back in the bowl as you can
I invite you now to join me in prayer, centering. We call upon sources of wisdom and power to join us in this time. We call upon those who have come before us, those who have loved us into being, whether that be literally or spiritually, emotionally, those who have encouraged us to live the lives that we live, those who have made us who we are. As we enter the time of the year that is more apt to reflection, to introspection, may we keep in mind those who have come before us, those for whom we have lit candles, those who are on our hearts. May we also be a source of strength and joy for each other in all of the seasons of life. Let us be one in this community. Let us celebrate our joys and bear witness to our sorrows and bring balance to this world and to each other's lives. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul, comfort me, comfort me, comfort me. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing. This morning's story is based on a book called The Fall of Freddy the Leaf by Leo Buscaglia. Spring came. Freddy, the leaf, was born on a branch of a tall tree along with hundreds of other leaves. Together they danced in the breeze and played in the sun. Daniel was the largest leaf and Freddy's best friend. He explained to Freddy that they were part of a tree in a park and about birds and the sun and the moon. Freddy loved being a leaf. In summer, many people came to the park. Let's all give them some shade, said Daniel. Making people happy is part of our purpose in life. Summer passed and fall came. The leaves turned red and yellow. They were all very beautiful. One day, some of the leaves were blown off by a strong cold wind. The leaves became frightened. What's happening, they said. It's the time for leaves to change their home, Daniel said. Some people call it dying. Will we die, Freddy asked. Yes, Daniel answered. Everything dies. I won't die, said Freddy. But his friends started to fall one after another. Soon the tree was almost bare. I'm afraid of dying, Freddie told Daniel. We are all afraid of things we don't know, Daniel said. 
But you were not afraid when spring became summer or when summer became fall. Changes are natural. Will we return in spring? Freddie asked. I don't know, but life will. Life lasts forever, and we are part of it, answered Daniel. We only fall and die. Why are we here? Freddie asked again. Daniel said, for the friends, the sun and the shade. Remember the breeze and the people and the colors in fall. Isn't that enough? That afternoon, Daniel fell with a smile. Freddie was the only leaf left. The first snow fell the next morning. The wind came and took Freddie from his branch. As he fell, he remembered Daniel's last words, life lasts forever. Freddie landed on the soft snow, he closed his eyes and went to sleep. In the tree and in the ground, there were already plans for new leaves in spring. We all come from ancestors. Ancestors are grandparents, grandparents, whose genes were passed down to us. We see them 
in the shapes of our faces, the colors of our eyes. Imagine your ancestors. What do they look like? Can you find parts of them in yourself? Ancestors are also those whose lives we admire, even if we are not related. They guide our actions by showing us how they followed their dreams so that we might find our way too. Imagine these ancestors. What lessons do they offer you? Ancestors are alive in us. They lived lives before us. Think of your ancestors. What do you know of their lives? What are their names? In just a moment, those of you in the sanctuary will receive a sticky note and pen. You can take a sticky note or two or three. Write down the name of one ancestor on each. After the service ends, bring the sticky note with you out, to the out of the sanctuary and add it to the ancestral tree artwork in the pavilion. <clears throat> If you're joining by Zoom this morning, I invite you to either write the name of your ancestors on a piece of paper at home, or simply hold them in your heart and mind for a moment. And do we have the sticky notes? Yep. <laughs> okay. We honor the ancestors who came before us. They are alive in us, and for their presence in our thoughts and hearts, this morning we are grateful. You are invited to stand as you're willing and able and join in our final hymn today. Pull out those percussion instruments that you have been waiting to play again. And our final hymn, it's Where Do We Come From? And Dominic and Ellis will be leading it. They will, we will sing it together a total of two times. And if you want to make a round of it, you're more than welcome.
Uh, I think art is still counting the offering. So. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Go now into the world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love, go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so, amen, blessed be.